Uh, firstly, thank you very much for uh, the introduction there. Um, I would like to thank Gargan. This is an amazing opportunity to come over here from, from the UK and see all you lovely people in the States. Um, it's going to be a great sort of, a, like I said, I've had a personally a couple of brilliant days here with education, and hopefully we can carry on that through now. So, like I said, today we're going to just cover some uh, RPDs. So, again, something we've been doing in the UK at Skillbond. I'll, what I'm going to do briefly is just give us a quick introduction, what I do personally, what we do as a company, and obviously how we're associated with Argon. And then um, we'll go through some uh, quick presentation, and then obviously we'll go into a bit of live demos, demos today too with the three shapes. So, but no, brilliant. So obviously just to give you a brief introduction of myself really, I was born and raised obviously in South Africa. I came over to the UK in 2002, and obviously qualified as a dental technician back in 2005. Can you hear me? Okay, good enough. Better. Thank you, guys. Um, and yeah, I've come from a sort of a third line generation. So I've, I'm a family of technician. My uncle's a technician. My grandfather's a technician. And so that's where the journey's really started. So like I said, so it's been about 20 years qualified. Um, obviously, I got my first three shape system back in 2010. Um, and since I've joined my current position at Skillbond, obviously, I'm accredited uh, three shape trainer as well. Um, especially with the removal background myself. Obviously, we've got uh, um, lots of advanced courses we run. I've been lucky enough to obviously go out to, to Three Shape um, ourselves, obviously, and do many advanced courses out there in Copenhagen. So just to give you, obviously, outside of work, what I love doing really is basically I was lucky enough to come over here to Argon um, in San Diego in December and basically... Uh, in a nutshell, I think I love your country. You guys have got such an amazing country. I toured around for a month, and I think you guys... And so I personally love to travel. I love to get around, and I think, like I said, you guys are such a lucky bunch to, to be able to have this on your doorstep. So so amazing. Um, just to give you a brief background where we are in the UK, so Skillbond itself, that's our headquarters there on the left. Um, um, and obviously, that's where we are based, just outside London, 20 minutes from Heathrow. So obviously... We got a digital outsourcing center. Obviously, we're a sundry company ourselves. S Simon Rich is on the top there. He's obviously um, our managing director. He is around here, so if you do see him, obviously say hello. But obviously, we've been a dental company since uh, 1973, and we're into our 50th year in the industry. Um, we are the largest dental supply company at the moment in the UK. We've got about 120,000 different products. And we've been part of the Argon, the Argon Corporation since about 2001. After Argon started their digital journey, we began ours in 2014. So in 10 years, we've become the largest digital manufacturer in the UK, and we just served at uh, UK Dental Labs. So just to give you a brief background of my, obviously, working day, typical working day, like I said, we are a three-shape reseller, so we support over 425 UK dental labs with three-shape. We are the biggest three-shape reseller in the UK. And we offer a full range of digital products to the UK dental market, sort of averaging about 1,200 units a day. And that ranges from copings, crowns, RPDs, dentures. So a full digital service we offer to our UK customers. We also offer 14 dedicated digital courses. And we saw over five, sort of 500 technicians last year come through our doors. So, so like I said, we, we, we've really got a great understanding, especially when we start moving into the, the digital RPDs, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We're also very proud, like Argon itself, we, we, we pride ourselves on our support, and we were also sort of privileged enough to, to win provider, training provider last year, as well as aftercare provider. So that's something we're very proud of, and I know Argon itself is obviously, that, that's what their belief is as well, and we, we do like to support all our customers and sort of hold their hand through the journey. And, and like I said, we like to be an extension as part of the lab, so so, so obviously help them through the through the digital journeys, really. So. Moving on, so we're just going to have a quick couple of slides. We'll run into, like I said, just explaining what the, the RPD market is. But again, I think we see this. Uh, I've been going to a couple of lectures over the last couple of days, and, and we've we've seen this. Digital dentistry is not the future. It's definitely the present, especially with the, the amount of uh, RPD topics, de digital dentures we've covered over the last couple of days. It's, it, it is amazing to see where we are. So into oral scanners are driving digital dentistry. Obviously... I've just seen personally how, how it's grown over here in the States, but we've seen it in the UK as well. 
like you said, last year we saw cases grow by 66%. We work very closely with FreeShape in the UK, and uh, we, we've obviously seen a major pickup in I iOS usage, especially in the full denture and partial denture workflows, and I think it's going to continue to grow. Obviously, another um, positive that's obviously coming out from, from obviously where we are now, with especially moving into the, the, the RPD manufacturing process, is that 3D printing and the additive technology is obviously growing at such a rapid pace. But obviously, like I said, 3D printers are now the hottest equipment in the market. And also, like you said, it's become a true game changer um, for, like I said, the materials, the technology. It's allowing us to produce more products that we never used to be able to in the past. So. And obviously, I think while you guys are all here as well, like I said, digital RPDs, along with the digital denture workflow, is the fastest growing area in digital dentistry. We found, obviously, just ourselves as an outsourcing center in the UK, those that have been outsourcing to us have reduced their normal production by 60 to 70 percent. Um, and that's creating, and that's the, with them creating designs in less than 15 minutes. If you allow the producers RPDs, this is now the time to get started because I think, like you said, there's such an exciting time to go. So, so just to obviously give you a quick workflow, obviously, what is the workflow for producing a digital RPD at the moment? Obviously, you've got the scan element, which is obviously either interoral or model scanning. Obviously, then you have the CAD design, which is obviously you can choose whichever platform you're looking to use, your 3Shape, your Exacad, your Serona's. And obviously, you need a manufacturing process too in the CAM, which is obviously subtractive or additive. So we're just going to briefly just explain those quickly to you now. So obviously, the first one is obviously the subtractive manufacturing process that a lot of us are used to if you're milling in-house or you're sending to a, an outsourcing center. The pros of this is obviously You've got a various range of materials. Like I said, obviously none of those are going to be perfect for, for metal RPDs. But obviously the one positive from there is obviously you can get a very smooth, clean finish. But if you look at the cons, they definitely outweigh the pros by a long way. So obviously the problem with milling is you're going to have a considerable amount of waste and, and unused raw material. It takes a lot more time. Again, not effective or economic for large full undercut cases. So if you've got any sort of complex milling parts or patterns or you can't mill at sort of 90 degree angles, then, then you're gonna have a lot of problems. So, so like I said, especially for complex designs and, 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 and large cases, you're gonna have limitations. Another big thing for labs is obviously the wear of the milling tools and the spindles, obviously the, the maintenance of the equipment. It does cost a lot of uh, more maintenance, more repairing, wear and tear on the bows. And obviously there's, like I said, certain, if the, the designs are correct, you might have chips and fractures, which could occur during the, the machining process. They are still, like I said, people are using, they're using the subtractive process for RPDs. And just to give you guys a, a brief sort of uh, overview, you can, you can mill your sort of acetyl resins. All these previous sort of uh, products used to be maybe injectable, but now you can all get them through, through sort of uh, milling through pucks and obviously sort of acetyls, um, thermoplastics and your flexibles. You can mill them also out of a sort of a directly from the pucks. PMMA, we've already seen, I've already seen a couple of this, these couple of days, obviously we've, we've heard about Evotion, we, we've heard about the, the different sort of uh, processes and, and, and companies with, with this as a tried and tested. And obviously you've got the, the various other products like uh, Peak, you've got your Peak and your hybrid polymers too that have obviously evolved into the, the digital RPD market as well. But where we're probably going to speak more about today is obviously we're going to talk about SLM because obviously I think SLM is the, the only product available for making partial cobalt chrome dentures at the moment. So additive, as you can see, the pros with that additive is obviously material efficient, resource saving. You're going to get a faster route from design to production. You can create the complex geometric designs easily and accurate and, and I think that's where it comes into its own because obviously any sort of shapes any sort of patterns you can definitely SLM 3d print it's a bottom to top process so as you can see from the image like I said the laser just touches and fuses it fuses your pattern together and obviously you can create so whatever sort of shape whatever pattern but also it's, it's highly so if you do have a very large tall different palette you're thinking of like you said you can definitely 3d print it no problem but also it's a passive production process. So like we said, there's no wear and tear and costs involved with, with um, machining. And again, there are a few cons. Like you say, there is a limited range of materials at the moment. But again, for, for, for cobalt chrome, it's perfect. And also there is a, there is a small element of uh, surface finishing because obviously it's not, as, it's not as smooth as milling. 
But obviously, again, they're still cutting out a lot of labor, which we're going to go into just now. So just to give you an idea, types of RPDs using the additive process. Again, we can do 3D printed denture resins. There's a lot there on the market at the moment. You got your monoblock try-in resins or your, your flipper type dentures. You can obviously, if you guys still invest and cast your machines, you still got casting machines yourselves in the lab. You can you can print in a caster machine uh, in a castable resin and still invest and cast yourselves. Or well, again, what we're going to discuss today is obviously the the SLM, the SLS, and I think this is the most obviously unique um, option available because obviously this is the only one that we can do to. Pr metal is still going to be around for a long time, and and obviously, like I said, sometimes you can't you can't avoid a, a metal RPD. So this is the only process that we can actually digitally manufacture them from start to finish. So as we said, selective laser melting, as we call it, SLM, is an additive manufacturing process where the object is built layer by layer, as you saw from the image before the, the movie there. Again, it's powdered metal, cobalt chrome alloys fused together, 30 microns to avoid many issues associated with the traditional wax and, and the casting method. As we have no plastic patterns and casting, means that unparalleled consistency. And that, that's the key benefit, Jeb, because you can always get that consistent result. You're going to get precision all the time. There's nothing, there's no other variables that can make a, or, or, or add that can make this uh, process go wrong. So as you can see, if you've designed right, which we're going to do just now, you should be getting a good result with obviously companies like ourselves or Argon now just about to release it as well. So like you said, you'll get a very consistent result if you follow the, the correct stages of the, of the design protocols. So just a, a little slide there just to give you a short historical overview of, of additive and obviously where we are with when it comes to SL, SLM and SLA. So as you can see back in 1984, it's just to give you an idea, we're talking about 40 years in the, the industry, obviously when SLA was invented by Chuck Hall there, but to see where we've come now. But the biggest game sort of changer I think was in 2011 when companies like 3Shape, Exacad, they actually designed a dedicated RPD CAD software which again allowed us to to design these these partial frameworks digitally, and that's allowed us to then obviously have the the corresponding manufacturing processes like the SLM machines, the concept lasers, which obviously can produce these and then obviously produce a fully digital SLM partial denture. Again, the question we ask all the time is so why digital? Just to give you a brief overview of the steps, I think if you guys do these by hands yourselves and use the analog method, as we can see from surveying to making duplicate models, waxing up, screwing up, investing, furnace time, casting, sandblasting, trimming, electropolishing, to the final finish. There's a lot more stages that you're going backwards and forwards, which is obviously for you guys in the lab is, is obviously highly important because we're trying to cut down that labor. Labor intense, make it a lot more user friendly for you guys. So, And if you look at the digital steps, there's a lot more sort of a lot more the footprint is a lot better. So we obviously we can acquire the scan either by iOS or um, desktop scanning these days. 3Shape got a great software which we're going to talk through. We go through the stages just now. Again, send it off for your laser sintering. There's only a little bit of surfacing. Obviously we've got to cut the supports off and the sprues and obviously just do some surface finishing trimming. These days now obviously with the digital workflow, you've, you've got uh, machines like this here, the OTEC, which is obviously a rotator, a polisher. So again, we all know how long and hard it is to, to polish these things up to a high standard. And again, you get a quality finish at the end of it where you know that you're going to get unparalleled results, you're going to get better fits. So just to show you how many stages we've cut out, just, just by that. So I think if you guys are, are doing analog and casting your own chromes yourselves at the moment, you can see you can cut the steps probably by half or even more. Like I said, in the beginning, most of our customers sending to us are, are cutting their labor costs by, uh, or their labor times down by 66% at the moment. So. so again, just to obviously before we get into the three shape designing, like I said, we're just going to talk about digital versus an analog, the key benefits. So again, that's the massive one on the left. We've got the less labor intensive, shorter process workflow, keep control of the designing in-house. Um, I don't know what the, the market's like in the in the US at the moment, but in the UK, we we have got a, a big lack of experienced technicians, especially in the, the Cobalt Chrome department area. So if you guys can control yourselves or, or at least have experienced technician teaching younger generation of techs how to design correctly, that, that's such a key benefit at the moment. Because like you say, we, we've got a real shortage and, and the 
the, the experienced Cobalt Chrome labs out there in the UK are obviously either at full capacity or they're going to have to obviously increase their turnaround times by so much. So, so like you said, it's 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 it, this is another sort of solution for helping you guys out there. So, again, there's a reduced investment of maintenance costs for expensive furnaces these days, casting equipment, less wasted material resources. Like you said, you just got to think about all the alloys, the waxes, all the other extra little sundries you get along with it. This is quite an important one too, because obviously you can share designs these days and information between the technicians and the clinicians. So softwares like Three Shape and Exacad have have their trios inboxes and their communities. So so you can share them all via cloud. So it's all patient data and GDPR regulated. And again, you guys can design something, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, send it to your dentist or clinician, and they can send back an approval. And like I said, or, or any adjustments that's needed. So again, it's, it's, it's just working the whole digital workflow, which is, it, which is great. So obviously just to go along with all the diff, diff, obviously the, the less wasted materials obviously can improve the health and safety or the trimming, not having the investment, the polishing, you know, breathing all that sort of a nasty stuff in. And again, that leads on to obviously the potential reduction in environmental impact as well. But also here's another great one is obviously the ability to recall, change design and remanufacture without the need to start the process again, which again leads to the less labor intensive, saves you guys time, money, effort. As we know, time time is such a money spinner these days in, in, in the dental labs, especially after COVID. So if you can have your design on the screen, you guys just need to change it, you know, recall it. You've got little apps and like smile designs these days, which can all help you. It's it's the, the three shape, the Exacad are definitely leading the way with that. So. And also it gives you an option to enable you to start your RPD workflow with virtual teeth, which again, we can't do an analog. So you could do a try and you can have your try and done or smile design or your digital diagnostic works, um, mock-ups, which you, again, can help you when you're doing your treatment plan, designing class, designing sort of um, designing post backings. You could have all that done prior to you actually getting into designing and actually sending off that that SLM STL for, for manufacturing process. So you can do all the planning right up, right up to, like I said, it's cutting all that time. You're not having to send trines backwards and forwards. So again, just to give you guys, before we get to three shape is obviously just to requirements. I think obviously if you guys are using three shape or Exacad, obviously you need to have the right software to use. So either you need to have a, an RPD software standalone, or obviously, like I said, the, the complete package that three shape do the complete restorative, which is ideal. I think, I think in the modern day dental lab, you guys will be um, probably finding there's a crossover on three shape. There's a lot more crown and bridge elements coming into the RPD designs. There's a lot more you can do with that. The gingivers, the, the Pontics, adding Pontics, which I'll show you as well. Again, just bear in mind, if you don't have the, the complete restorative, you do use things like CAD points. So CAD points is obviously a top up by a three shape there. So obviously that will, it will use 15 CAD points for every save. So again, maybe the initial investment, if you're only doing a few CAD points is a good solution for you to guys to test the water. But definitely I would look at investing in the complete restorative package so you don't have to hit those hurdles when you get when you come to them. 15 CAD points can be a, a lot of money if you keep if you're doing 10, 10 RPDs a month, that can that, that can definitely rack up uh, in costs. This is probably the most important one when we talk about, especially when we're talking about the SLM um, RPDs, whether you guys are gonna send to to places like ourselves or Argon is having the correct DME file. So the DME is the digital media exchange file. And this obviously controls and contains all the material, obviously specific parameters. So these parameters are essential because obviously we need to make sure there's, that you're gonna be sending a model free STL to a company to produce an SLM framework. You need to make sure that all the, the major connectors, the clasping, the jumpers, they all totally correct. So having that DME file in, so ideally, you would either contact Argon itself and they would obviously provide you with that DME file. They can install it onto your three shape and then obviously that will allow you to design and at least you know you're designing within their parameters for manufacture. We also advise obviously customers to have obviously completed the, uh, the three shape level one courses or like I said, in the UK, we have a, a level one, level two, level three. So we try to get people to obviously from intermediate to advanced users because again, it is quite a, it's quite a jump up and we definitely don't want people to be overwhelmed when they do sort of start to, to come on these courses because there's a lot more designing involved. It's not just designing basic coping. So 
like I said, it, it is quite an advanced process. So, so we do try to keep the sort of uh, uh, users up to an advanced level, intermediate to advanced level. And also, like I said, I think Argon, like ourselves and Skillbone, when you send the first cases through your Argon link, I think you, the best thing is to contact support so we can check the designs together before uploading. This will also then stop you guys obviously having any bad files, rejections later, and obviously delaying your process you're in. So it's always good for those first couple. As I said, we like to hold your hands. We like to be an extension of your, your lab. I know Argon's got brilliant support as well as we do. Give us a call and give us a shout. And like you said, they can jump on and have a look and, and, and run through those, those, those design protocols together. So, but um, right, so that's all great, guys. So, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to jump into the, the, the three shape now. And actually now we're going to run through a partial and hopefully there we can, we can go through all the different stages. Hopefully uh, you guys might be designing partials at the moment, but hopefully there'll be any tips and tricks you guys can pick up. And obviously we'll talk about obviously how we're going to produce a, a proper fully functional fitting SLM RPD denture. So I'm just going to come out of that. So start the order form. So I'm going to do an SLM RPD today. So something that we could be used to. And, and as I said, we can obviously using the incorporating the, um, the crown and bridge workflows as well. So maybe we want to do, like I said, a, a workflow for possibly a backing or a, a, a metal dummy, as we call it sometimes in the UK. But I would highlight a tooth. And obviously what you can do is you can incorporate actual pontics. So you can't incorporate the crown options, but you can definitely incorporate either full anatomy pontics or you can actually come obviously a cutback. So obviously if you want to do um, layering or composite layering, or maybe you want to do some wraparound intention in there. So I'm actually going to obviously select an anatomical pontic for that tooth element. And then obviously we can go double up on the workflow page there and actually go to removable. So if we click on the removal, as we said earlier, the, the DME is the most important. So finding the correct DME. So obviously when you've downloaded it or Argon's given it to you, it's called S Argon SLM RPD finished. We only do a finished option at the moment. And then because we selected Argon SLM, uh, Argon SLM RPD finished for the removable option, it's automatically changed it to the frame as well. So again, this is where you guys can choose whether you're scanning in your antagonists or I'm just going to put a model there, and obviously I'm just going to take the antagonist off. I don't have one at the moment, so just to save some time this afternoon. And then obviously you can obviously put in any any name you guys have. And then we can go into the scan. I'm not going to scan. I don't have a scanner here, so I'm just going to click OK. And obviously I'm going to just bring in a, in a case. This would be the same way as you guys bring in a, an interoral case. So just I'm going to go into import my scan. And I'm just going to bring in the, the option now for my RPD. If you guys are desktop scanning, if you guys have the E2 scanner and above, you have the option to actually have texture scanning, just like that down in the bottom left-hand side. So you can actually, especially if you guys are learning RPD designs and getting used to it, you can actually draw it on a model and then ex someone actually follow your design. So it's a great option if you are looking at investing in three shapers to, to maybe look at the E2 and above or even the new F8 out there because obviously you can then draw your designs onto the model and whether your IT or your, your, your CAD technician can follow it when he's, when, when he's actually designing it. So it's a neat little trick that. So I'm going to go right, right click now and go to design anyway and I'll show you that on the, on the big screen now. So. so as you can see, if you scan the model in there, you could have your design drawn on there. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to have that with an interval, but definitely with desktop. And again, if you needed to ever change that, you've got an option here on the right-hand side, which says there, show texture scan, and you can choose that. You will need to jump between texture scan and normal monolithic, because we're going to talk about the undercut um, and, and the, the treatment planning for clasps, because this is vital, because you don't get your undercut depth chart in texture scan, as you can see. but. Obviously, you can definitely draw it on there and you can still follow. So so what I'm going to do first is, again, most three shapes skip this prepare stage. I'm just going to go back to prepare. And just to give you guys a quick idea of what we can do at this stage here. So as you can see, we've got a model up. But there's just a quick couple little things we just need to look at at this stage here. So obviously, even though the model looks pretty much OK to me, we, we are going to be dying, doing SLM metal frameworks here. So we want the model to be totally, totally accurate at this stage. So. If you do spin the model around 360, sometimes you might pick up on a little couple of areas like that there. 
So this is obviously what we call artifacts, or um, it's a bit of obviously where maybe the texture's caught a bit of grease from your fingers, or, or maybe little lights affected it. You might see it on interaural scans as well, but, but these areas are highly, effect, uh, highly important to get rid of those artifacts. Um, and if you are using 3Shape sort of 2020 and above, you do have this option here. It says remove artifacts. It's the little Band-Aid option. If you click on that, you can actually go into these areas, just highlight it in red. If you play the little button, apply it, what it does, it just makes it watertight. So this is highly important when we are talking about um, interaural especially. So when we say something's watertight, we want the, we want the scan to be sort of a solid or have the base on it because obviously what we're going to be doing is we're going to be laying tissue down or we're going to be laying major connectors down. If, we, if, if something's not watertight or if you hear the scans are not watertight, it, it, a, a good representation sometimes, if, if, you, if you took a sieve, even though it looks solid, maybe if you pour water into the sieve, it's going to seep through all the little holes. And that's similar to what a scan is going to do. So if you ever do hear some, someone talking about watertight scans, it's ideally like this is this is the option here where you can get rid of all these little holes or micro holes or little artifacts and that little band-aid tool or the remove artifact tool is is highly highly important because it, it it just fixes up all those little areas which can cause you a little bit of a problem so as you can see something like that just highlight it hit the little play button all it's doing is doing like a band-aid it's just meshing it together but at least when you are drawing your connectors you're not going to get these squiggly lines you're not going to get any sort of uh, issues with with uh, errors pop up so so it's just a little tool to, to use there. Again, you've got options there for your, your sculpt. If you did need to sort of contour the tissue at all, you can sort of, uh, you know, some areas like that might cause a bit of problem. So if you wanted to put a bit of, bit of contouring on there, you can just smooth it down a little bit. Um, we do have options there for attachments. I'm not gonna go into too much attachments, but if you were using locators, uh, you can choose your different sort of attaches. There's like the, the Ryan 83, you can actually use different attachments. So if you were designing on top of attachments, locator type dentures, removals, you can use those, incorporate them into your model. But this is a neat little tool too, is your, your tooth extraction tool. So again, if you're doing immediates or you're doing any, any sort of options um, that you require teeth to, to be extracted, you can just click on that one of the cross, highlight the tooth you want, and then obviously just play button. And as you can see, it's taking the tooth off totally. And again, you've got total option there to then obviously go contour the tissue, smooth it off. You can create your own socket if you wanted to. Again, quick and easy way. To, before, you always had to take the model, do a scan, then go cut it off, scan it back in. But as you can see, nice, quick and easy, really good tool to use. So I'm going to bring it back in because I do want my, my tooth for that option there for the, for the partial design. And we're going to go next. As um, in the order form, we selected a, an element of anatomy. This is the stage it's asking for us here. So it wants to know where that tooth element is going to be. So all we've got to do is go highlight the, the, the one four area, for the Pontic area. So I'm just going to click where the annotation needs to be. And then we can go next from here. And then this is probably the most important part of the whole SLM design process is this is obviously where we need to obviously gauge our undercut depth here on the, on the right hand side. And this is the color chart that obviously when we are planning our drawing our class in here, we can keep flicking between the two here and this will help us then obviously decide obviously how much block out wax to take away. So as you can see, obviously this blue arrow coming down here, this is the path of insertion. And obviously you have total control to control that to ever, wherever you want that. So if you're thinking about the model in your hand, how's this, this, this chrome framework going to come off? You can then obviously use the blue arrows on the, on the left-hand side to, to draw and then just obviously click and move it as it goes along by five degrees each time. Or if you wanted to, you can just position the model yourself and then obviously click set from view and then that does it automatically. So as you can see, it changes at the click of a button, the path of insertion, just like you would have it on a surveyor. But obviously it, it, it's brilliant for when you guys are designing these frameworks so you can actually know where to put the clasps. So on a case like this, we'd probably want it to just have it something like that. I'm just gonna show you hit set from view, it's changed it. We've still got undercut to play with on each side there. And then what we do is when we go next, you'll see it will lay the, the block out wax on there. 
and again, it's a brilliant little tool. It's highly accurate. It does it all in real time. And if I top right hand side, if you put your, your block out wax on, you can see it just like you've done it on a surveyor. And then obviously now you can come to using your wax knife options here. So your, your plus, your add, your remove, and you can actually use it to take away how much blocking out wax you want to take away as, you, as you're preparing for your clasps. So as you can see, it's quick, easy. So when we talk about SLM chromes and all the different RPDs you can do digitally, we give everyone a, we've got a great little guideline that we, we, we show everyone. Um, I'm just gonna get it up now. So if you have a look at the, um, we, we create a little PDF for everyone to give them. So it gives you all the hotkeys that you use for RPDs. It gives you all the sort of, um, what, what each sort of distances and parameters and, and major connectors that the minimum thicknesses. But the most important thing that we add on there is this, this little undercut depth chart. And that's the chart that's up there where you can see the yellow, the orange, the, the, the red, I mean the dark orange, and then going to red. And it just gives you a little sort of a idea on what different materials you can use in that undercut. So as we're designing an SLM RPD, we can only go to 0 0.25. You go beyond 0 0.25, you're going to get something and it's going to be too retentive. Your C tools, your peak materials that are a bit more rigid, but you've still got a bit of flex, you can go up to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 millimeters and obviously any of your flexibles or your thermoplastics you can take up to 0 0.75 obviously just as a rule of thumb anything going beyond into the dark red above 0 0.75 millimeters is going to be too too tight you're probably going to get it on or it's going to break all your models as soon as it comes off and it just gives you a nice little highlight they're just showing you so so when you are planning your class you can obviously follow these guidelines so again we want to stick to anywhere that's obviously to the yellow. That's that's the limitation we want to go to. So I'm just going to bring back our three shape now. So as we can see, when you when you are taking away the wax here, you can use your different options here, and you can actually take it away. So when you are planning, you can see where the color chart is. Some people like to obviously take it away subtly, and just just so where they can see the yellow. Or like you say, you can take it all away and then design it so you can see when the transition is going to be there. Obviously, we don't want to be taken anywhere measly, measly or distally at this page. It all just wants to be on the buckle areas because that's what's going to keep. And anywhere where there's going to be any rest seats. So if there wasn't going to be any rest seats, you just want to make sure that there's no block out wax, other you're going to have a, a non-functional rest. So like you say, we just want to just make sure that there's no, obviously, block out anywhere there. But what you can also do at this stage too is maybe instead of taking the block out wax away, you might want to sort of uh, add some retention. I mean, some some uh, some block out wax to these sort of areas. So if you do have a anatomical, very sort of uh, big anatomy rouge, you can actually just put it into those areas and then use the green tool just to smooth it out, just so you get a more sort of smoother transition on the palette there. So again, it's not just just not just taking away the block out wax. You actually just obviously you can add into certain areas, or maybe there's a sore spot you want to avoid, or the tuberosity. You can just obviously add some material there as well. So and then our tooth has come in. So I'm just going to bring our tooth into position there. So this was for the the metal dummy there. So we're just going to bring that into play here. Again, I'm just going to quickly design, put a tooth in there. quickly get it into place. At this stage, what is quite nice too, is you've got an option down here on the right hand side, which is this little this little blue crown, which is additional scans. With that there, you can actually bring in a scan. So, so obviously you can bring in a tooth. So for, for maybe it was a pre-op or in this case, maybe we had a, a denture try-in. So I can actually go load a scan in. So maybe we did a virtual denture try-in, like we said, so you can actually pre-plan these things. And I can bring in a denture try-in. So you can use that additional option there. So as you can see, that's just overlaid because obviously it hasn't changed the orientation. So I brought that in there. And then obviously you can then 
use the mirror tools and all the crown and bridge tools to obviously position that if it was a pre-op. But also we can use these for these dentures, especially the posterior teeth there, we can actually use those for guidelines if we want to put some retention posts in the framework later on. So again, that will be there on the right hand side. So you can always bring in that try at any stage. So that's quite a nice little feature there for you guys as well. But I think we're okay there with that that tooth. Again, ideally you guys would have had a an opposing model to to run the articulation through. But I'm just going to keep that there for now. And then obviously just obviously play the our contacts. And again, just you can just fine tune your denture tooth. Because as long as it's going to be touching the the framework, it's going to mesh together just now. So So let's go next. So we're still moving along left to right. So this is the cutback stage now for the the little tooth there, the, the pontic element. If you click pontic creation on the left hand side, you've got anatomical, which is obviously just taking off a layer off the whole tooth by 0.3 millimeters. But if you click in that little box, you've got an option here for a facial reduction. And what that's going to do is just cut the veneer off there, as you can see. Because we're going to maybe want to, we want to keep the occlusion element of this tooth. Obviously, maybe it was tight in the bite or, you know, strong occlusion. So you can still keep that as metal. But then obviously, you might want to have um, some compo composite or acrylic inside there. We're going to create some mechanical retention in there. And obviously, obviously, as it's in the aesthetic, the aesthetic zone, we can, we can just bring that in there now. So all we're going to do now quickly is just... Drawing that red line, I can take away the model at the moment. And you can control how much you want to cut off that facial veneer. And then if you hit preview, it will always show you what you do, cutting away. But also, you can also, by the offset, you can increase the offset if you want. And that will show you how much you're actually taking away here as well. So you can see, you can control that totally. So maybe we'll take it up to 0.9. And then obviously, I'm just going to bring that a little bit up here. When you're using the, the cutback tool, it's ideal just to obviously do little by little, and then obviously hit preview each time. And you can always see what you're doing at any stage. So I'm quite happy with that at the moment. So I'm going to go next. What I'm going to do now is use the morphing tool at this stage here, because you've got your wax knives. And if all I want to do is just hollow that out a bit, because obviously we want to create some retention posts in there earlier or later. So all I'm going to do is just hover into there. And by using some of the, the smart keys here, I'm just going to hold control. And all I'm doing is just hovering that, that area in there, just to make it a bit more concave, because obviously then we can add some retention posts there later. That's OK. And then we're going to go next. We're going to go onto the, the SLM framework now, which is obviously the RPD design. That we can leave there for now. So as we go bottom to top now, retention grids, connector, class, and then obviously working, working our way down, we're going to start with the retention grids. So this is, again, if you selected the DME right in the order form, you should be able to make sure that you're following the right retention grids because again they're going to be designed for the right parameters for the for the for the SLM process. So I've got an upper mesh here. So as I can see there, I've got the Argon SLM upper mesh. I'm going to click on that and click on the, the little box. You get your little pencil up. And all I'm going to go do here now is, is draw where your mesh is going to go. And then once you've drawn your, your square or your rectangle shape, you can actually manipulate the little dots to how you want that to be. And again, if you hit preview at any stage, it will show you what you've got. Again, I'm just going to go to the other side as well. Click on the little box. Get your pencil up. And remember here, guys, this is where you can obviously remember change your between the two there if you wanted to. So if you were following a design strictly, then again, you can just jump between texture scan on and off and then just 
move it to where you need it to be. And again, just hit preview. So it shows you what you bring up. Right, so there's a little couple of features also when you're doing the retention grid. So if you click on a dot here, as you can see, it brings up this little icon here. So again, this is where you can position. Obviously, this is just a circular mesh, so it's not, but maybe you had a diamond or a square mesh, you wanted to change the shapes or the, the edges. But, and again, if you grab the, the blue ball there, you can, you can sort of position that to wherever you want that. Or like I say, you can actually spin it around to how you need it. Another neat little feature here too is obviously once you've got it into position is, is obviously it, the resin gap is set at 0.4 at the moment. So again, you wouldn't want to go beyond the, the resin gap to 0.4. And again, this is where digital is, it comes into its own really because if, if we had to do a 2D cross section over that area, as you can see, that there's gonna be pretty much spot on to 0.4 if I got it straight. So again, and if you went right across the board, you're gonna have that perfect retention mesh there set at the resin gap at 0.4. You're not gonna be sort of going below that. You can increase that if you want, but I'd, I'd advise not going below that. So a lot of people between 0 0.4, 0 0.6. But what also you can do at this stage is you see this little green edge you get here. So if you are coming up against a, a neighboring tooth, you can actually tuck that in a bit if you hold sort of shift on the keyboard and you use your roller ball, you can actually sort of tuck that, uh, this green area in here at the moment. So as you can see, so if you are coming up or you, you tight for space, you can sort of minimize that, that area there as well, just by using shift and the, con and the roller ball on the mouse. And again, it's just creating a nice neat finishing edge underneath. And again, always hit preview to show you what you got left with there. So, so again, and that will work. That will work great if you had what maybe just a very small area in between the tooth, something like in this area here. You could actually then instead of your acrylic edge going up the mesial distal tooth, you can actually minimize it and shrink it right down. But we're quite happy with that at the moment. So just keep that where that is. So then we can go next onto major connectors. And again, you've got a couple options here for major connectors, but as we selected SLM in the in the order page, RPD, we want to keep following the same suit. It's it's highly important that you make sure that you're following the correct, because if this was maybe a flexible material, you could have a very thick framework. So so it's highly important to keep following the following the correct corresponding at each stage when you're doing major connector clasps, finishing lines. So again, so I'm gonna click on the, the major connector. I know it's Argon SLM, I can see it. Brings up your little pencil, and now again, we're gonna obviously draw a design. So again, start somewhere, obviously move it all around the framework, and then obviously bring it back to where we need it. So again, this is maybe where I wanna go back to my texture scan. And then obviously, here we go. Again, I think if you're getting used to CAD, it's always good to maybe just do to continue starts if you want to do, instead of continuously drawing, it takes a little bit more dexterity with the mouse. But as you can see, we can just follow our design. Because we've got the anatomy element here, we need to obviously bring it into so it's going to touch it somewhere. Because as soon as the major connector touches the, the Pontic there, at least it will mesh together. And then obviously we're going to just obviously join it where we need it to join right at the at the bottom there. As we've got the retention mesh, here, it's highly important that obviously you can see where we've 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 intersected the retention mesh. We've gone through the red line, and we've come out the other side. If you hadn't done that and you left it at this, what you're going to do when you generate the STL at the end of the the, the design is you'll get two separate you'll get two separate files. So like I said, it's highly important that you actually go through the red line. You cross over through it, and then obviously you can bring it through. And so obviously that means it's obviously going to mesh over each other and obviously join together. So, so once it's all joined, all we're going to do is just obviously finish it to where we need it to be. Again, if you right-click and go fast edit, there's an option there to have that option, which is obviously quite quick and easy to to design if you, if you feel comfortable doing it. Again, maybe you want to design it up here if you wanted to. It's quick and easy to design there. 
there are a lot of uh, um, of these X Pen type uh, accessories you can buy online these days, obviously, which which help because obviously you can actually draw. I think we're all used to tablets these days. Again, I think this one's got a touch screen on here too. So as you can see on the laptop, I can actually draw, draw it. I think a lot of people. So definitely if you want to explore those type of um, interfaces and how you use them within your design, you can definitely use that. I'm just going to change that back there quickly. And again, the nice thing about the, the fast edit, it, it auto corrects it as soon as you draw it. So if you did need these areas, you just draw a line and it just automatically connects. You can use the major connector too. If there was rest areas, you can actually draw into those rest areas. So you can actually incorporate them into the rests. And then obviously just make sure that it has intersected somewhere in the retention mesh. And it's always good at any stage, you can always hit preview just to show you what, what comes up because it's always nice to see what you've drawn. And then obviously from there, you can obviously then amend it as, as and when you need it to. That's it. Okay. And again, like you say, if you needed to extend some areas, you can actually come in here and just continue to to draw where you need them. If that was a, a rest there, you could draw that. And again, any areas you want to sharpen up, you can sharpen up. But also, we can also then obviously open the palette as well. So if you wanted a skeletal type design, there's an option here for, for window. If you click on that one there, this little blue one down here, we can actually, let's change back to our, our design there, our texture scan. And by using that window one, all I'm creating is another open palette design. And again, just make sure you join the, the first dot you did, and then obviously just draw it to where you need it to be. Bear in mind, you don't want to make these these connectors between here too thin. You need at least with SLM at least a two millimeter sort of for your for your junctions and your and your arms. So again, just make sure that with anything CAD, whether you're doing SLM or or any of the other materials we spoke about. I think it's always good to 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 be able to to overcompensate, especially if you're learning, because it's always easier to you know work out something that's you can trim instead of realizing that when you've designed it, it's too thin and it's not obviously going to function because you wish you probably had more on it. So I always tell everyone maybe just over just overcompensate slightly, and at least then you know you're not going to get because what what happens with the process when we do take these off the plates? Obviously we build the SM materials. There is a manual process to take them off the plates. So if these areas and your connectors and your, ma your, minor, your minor connectors and your major connectors are too thin, obviously this is where they can bend and warp. And obviously then that's going to obviously create a ill fit and framework for you guys. So again, it's always good to, to just make sure that you do have those. You do have all these options too in your, in your, your advanced settings on the right hand side. You know, you can actually measure the, the thicknesses or the width of these, these areas if you wanted to. You just obviously draw, and obviously you can just use the, the the measuring tape on there, or like we said already, you've got your cross section. So if you you are worried about thicknesses or frameworks, as you can see, with with our SLM DME, the minimum thickness is 0.7, so 0.7, maybe 0.62 degree if it was a plate design. But as you can see, you can just measure, cut it in half, use the cross section, and then measure it in real time there. So. So you do have all these available tools on the right hand side here, which you can use, which helps. So I'm just going to bring in the Pontic there on the right hand side. We can see where that is there. So again, as you can see, the Pontic's touched the framework as well. So that's all going to mesh together. We'll tidy it all up just now. And then obviously we're going to go next. So now it comes to the class, which is probably the next 
most in, important stage other than obviously the, the blocking out. And then we can now look at how we're going to class these areas now. Again, if you look in the, the bottom left-hand side here, you're always going to follow obviously what you selected in the order page, which is obviously Argon SLM clasps. So as you've got here, we've got an Akers class for either anteriors or posteriors. So I'm going to click the, the posterior one. Click in the box. Your pencil is going to come up. And again, what we're going to do is just obviously get ready to, to start the class. So we're going to start where we start the class, but then obviously move around the tooth. So unlike all the other ones where we, we've been drawing and then joining the first dot up, with clasps, all you do is you use one line. So I'm just going to click, click, click. And then click the last dot. And as you can see, that class comes up. And then obviously it tapers off. And then as you can see, now you can move these to where you need them to go. But remember the undercut depth chart because we want to keep, as this is going to be SLM, you want this to be in the yellow. You don't want it to go past that, otherwise that can cause a bit of a problem. And then obviously it's using a few hotkeys here as well. So if you do want to thicken up the class, you use control. You can see it's moving it up. If you hold shift, obviously you widen the clasp. So again, depending on whatever material you're using for your frameworks, you can design them to, obviously because we selected argon clasp here, it comes in with the, the recommended thickness and width. But again, like I said, maybe the first couple of cases you guys do, you might want to make them a little bit thicker, a little bit wider. And that will just make sure, obviously, when you, when you get used to them, the more experience you get using the, the RPD software is obviously you'll be able to just gauge these by eye eventually and just say, well, you can see where you need them to go and how thick they need to be. So again, you could probably turn off the, the point of the where the clasp engages that last third. So we'll keep that one there. And then all we've got to do now is just make sure we join it to the framework. And then we've got a couple options here. So we've got the Argon SLM minor connector. I'm just going to click on that one. And all we've got to do is just position that minor connector. And again, this is where we will use our, our shift and controls. So obviously, because this is obviously the area it's going to join that retention mesh, so I'll probably start off a bit thicker, and then obviously you can control. If you ever need to add a dot either, you can also just right click and just go add point, and then obviously you can design it so you sort of get more of a uniform shape by just uh, adding and removing dots if you need to. But again, it's just making sure each one's touching, and again, where the clasp is touching the, the framework, you just want to make sure. Don't worry about it all being a bit bumpy and everything here because obviously we'll have an option to, to smooth that all off just now with our wax knives. But we'll just get it onto an area we want it to go. The one, the one other little thing to, to bear in mind here too is because we're doing these all model free, we're not going to have models, you're just going to send an STL, upload the STL and we're going to make these to guarantee the fit of these clasps because we don't want these to be moving around anywhere is we actually need to, to tag them in place as we call it. So there's an option for in the DME for an, a jumper which you see down here on the, the bottom left hand side. And if I click on that jumper option, oops, sorry, let me just click back to the clasp. So if I click off and I go back to that jumper option down here, what I'm going to use that jumper for is just to tag that framework onto here, which all it's going to do is hold that clasp in place. So when we do do the SLM build on the framework, it's going to stop it from flexing or moving. As I said, we've got a manual process to take these off. So you don't want that to actually move or bend when you, when you do take it off. So we will cut that jumper off. And, but it's just there to obviously give a bit more reinforcement. It keeps the clasp in place. And obviously, you guys are going to get back something that's going to fit and function. So add a little jumper. So anytime we add a clasp or if there's anything extended or skeletal, maybe roaches or eye bars or anything like that, you can just add a little jumper. Another little, obviously, option with the jumper is you can actually click on the jumper. You can actually obviously tidy these areas up with it, which is obviously around the retention mesh. Maybe you just want to 
go around the edges. It serves two purposes. Obviously, it's going to make it nice and neat, your framework. But also, what that's going to do is gives us somewhere to sprue onto, too, when we put it into the slicing software. You can actually sprue onto the, the perimeter. I know there's a little bit of a roll on there at the moment, but again, we'll have an option to smooth that all off with the, the wax knife just now. So, Again, we can put a little board around this side as well. Just join it up there. And again, we'll do the clasp on this side as well. So let's have a look for, we've got a Acker's posterior clasp. Click on the little box. And again, I'm going to keep it within the yellow coloring because that's where the, the undercut chart was. And again, if you want to just stick in certain areas, you can just use the, the shift or widen it. Okay. And then we just need to join that to the the major frame as well. So you could use that. Again, we'll use our wax knives to smooth it all off and, and clean it all up if we wanted to. But if you have a look in the different drop down there, there's many different class. You've got different class for roaches, for, um, like I said, your E class, your G class, your uniform class. It's anything you can sort of uh, download and as a DME, you can put it onto the, the system in the, the three shape. If you do have a look in the control panel, I'll just try to get it up there. I'll just show you where those options are in your control panel. If you go into the removal section in your control, open the control panel, there's all the different options here. So you can actually click, say, for frames. You can actually control your own, obviously, um, DMEs. Obviously, like I say, I wouldn't advise going below any of the parameters of the, the actual Argon SLM. But again, if you wanted to create your own type class where you've probably prefer them a little bit thicker or maybe a little bit wider, you can actually do that all here. And then obviously anytime you do anything in the in, in the control band panel, just make sure you save. Make sure you obviously keep it keep it closed down the top here when it asks you, confirm say, just say yes. And then the next time you open your your uh, dental system, you'll have your own type of class profile in the in in the actual setting. So but as we can see we could got the class there. If you wanted to, like say, again, it's just making sure you tag it on anywhere where there's going to be a tag on. We'll we'll blend it all in just now. You could just add a little jumper there just to make sure that it doesn't move there. As we said, our guys are normally trained to know where the jumpers go, so obviously we'll just cut those off. But again, it's just making sure that that's going to be a that that clasp is going to be held in place. So when we do do go through the whole manufacturing process, it's not going to move, it's not going to bend. But let's go next then into sculpt. And this is the area here where we can use the different tools, our wax knives, to, to blend, smooth it all into place. 
sort of take any creases out if we need to take any creases out. I think if you see the, the SLM frameworks that are going to have got on display in the, in the front there, they've got a really nice high mirror finish on them. So if you do use your, your smoothing tool at this stage just to, to, to take out all those little creases and kinks and sort of the higher the higher quality of the polish, it all determined by the, the smooth off you, you're making it at this stage. Yeah. So if you can make it as smooth as possible, as neat as possible, you'll get a far nicer framework at the end of it. Again, just bear in mind, if you are using this, the, the green tool, the smoothing tool, just make sure that obviously you're not using the, the intensity too high because it can take away if you need to. So again, if you are worried, always just add a little bit to certain areas where the, the joins are, what the clasps are going to be. And again, if there are any areas, like you say, you're worried about a stress point, just I would always... As I said, just add a bit of material onto those those areas just to make sure. It's a, it's a lot easier to to tickle it when it comes back than to realise it's too thin and it's and it's moving around. So, okay, let's go to finishing lines. Down the bottom left again, we've got a couple options for finishing lines. We just got to click in our finishing line box. The pencil will come back up. It gives you an automatic sort of a guideline of where the finishing line is going to be, the green line. So I'm just going to follow. You don't have to follow where they've put it, but you can just obviously pop it where you need that to go. And then just easy to manipulate. Same on the other side. We'll just, you can see there's a green line. It's warning us there's one there. So we're just going to. You just got to bear in mind sometimes the finish lines do come in the wrong or orientation just like that one. So if that ever happens, you just got to right click and go reverse spline. And then it will just reverse it back into position. And also what you can do is obviously, because we go through that rotating polishing unit, I do recommend sometimes by using your shift or your control, you can just make those areas a little bit wider, a little bit deeper. So what it does, it doesn't polish away when we do put it through the, the medium dry polishing process. So just, just sort of scroll them up a little bit just to make them a little bit wider. Obviously, our, our pontic here, we don't need a finishing line because we're going to add some retention in there. And we can go next. So you do have another option for sculpting at this stage now. So if there's any final sculpting at this stage, you might want to, you know, just reinforce behind those finishing lines. You might want to just add a little bit of material just so it gives it a bit of strength there so it doesn't polish away too much. Um, again, maybe you just worry about some of those joins or connectors, junctions, just add a bit of material. And this is where obviously you've got your options here for um, attachments as well. So you can actually add all your different. So there is an actual category here for partials. If you click into partials, you've got options for like your, you know, your wipe posts, your springs, your cylinders. So again, if you had any sort of a, in the anterior region, you wanted to pop in one of these um, white type posts, you can actually pop them in there, position them to where you want them. What I will advise if you are going to add any of these type of attachments is to always just right click and then add base because if you add a base then obviously that's going to give you extra so when we do remove those supports we're not going to take off any any, any sort of attachments by by accident um, but as I showed you earlier we brought in that 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 trine so remember our trine is still there so this is where you got a great guideline so if you did want to to design something with backings or you know retention posts where if you wanted to have some cylinder type or, or, or spring type post but where your teeth are going to go, that's why the triangle comes into its own year now. So you can see where those 
where your virtual teeth are, and then obviously you can see then where you need to put those. Uh, maybe you want to, for example, put a parametric shape. There's a cylinder option. You can click on that, and then you can actually position it on your frame. If you go by surface normal, you can actually position it to where you want it, and then actually you can draw and how thick you want that post to be. So again, if you're creating, you wanted some extra support and retention, you can do that with the, the guidance of your, your pre-op or your, your wax trying or existing denture. And as you can see, it comes in quite nicely if you did want to have some sort of a extra support like that. It works great for backings. It works great for sort of, you know, your anterior teeth areas where to put those springs and, and wipe posts. So again, let's just have a look. So the benefit of 3D printing is obviously if we say we want to look at this uh, post spring here, if I just add one on here just to show you, as you can see, you've got that coil retention mesh, uh, that coil retention. If that was milled, you wouldn't have that 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 fine, precise detail. Same as the Y post, because with the mill, it can't mill in all those intricate areas. But because it's 3D printed, that will print like for like, and then obviously you'll have that extra retention on there. So. So again, another positive, obviously, of, of the additive process over the, over the subtractive process. Um, a nice little feature too from 21 and above is obviously you've got option for stippling now too. So you could actually draw the areas you want to stipple now by selecting that green icon. And you can actually just click play. And as you can see, you can get these stippled effects here too. So there's a whole lot of different um, stippling options there. Bear in mind, if you are going to use stippling, it, it doesn't give you that high, nice shine you, you get out there with your with your mirror finish if it was smooth. But again, if you did want to have those those stippling options, you can use that. And again, you can just control the height of the stipple here to make it as subtle as you want or as aggressive as you want it. So it's a nice little feature that's come out. As well as the little feature that's come out also with the stippling was the, the option to actually put ID tags as well. So again, maybe you wanted to put a patient name or maybe you wanted to put a number you can just pop the text in there because because it's going to be 3d printed they're perfect to engrave so you just obviously draw whatever or, or write whatever name tag you want on there just position it where you want it hit the play button and then obviously even though that looks like it's standing out that will be engraved and again when it's gone, once it's gone through the, 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 the polishing process, it does just make it all nice and smooth, so it's not going to affect the mouth or the tongue in the mouth. If I click on attachments here too, there's another neat little function too, which has come out, is you've got this option here. And a lot of people now, we're noticing in the UK, especially they've um, <coughs> sorry, managed to create the STL file of their, their lab name, for example. So they can actually sort of turn it into an STL. You can actually add it into your control panel or put it onto the attachments, but you can actually bring that in at any stage. So if I click on that, say for instance, we've got the, the argon. Just gonna position it quickly. But you can actually position your own logo if you do have the option or facility to do that. And it's just a nice little gimmick or a nice little function, especially if you are designing them. It just goes to show you the, the options that you can do if it is going to be 3D printed, either in a castable resin or yourself, you want to send it to an SLM manufacturer. You can actually incorporate these little other little ID tags and, and your own unique sort of... Uh, spin on your, your frameworks, which is quite nice, like you say. And again, if it was sticking out a bit, you can just use the, your wax knife and just obviously make it a little bit more subtle. So when it does come up, it will come back nice and smooth. But it gives you a nice little option, especially, like you say, if you've got a, a logo you want to put incorporate, patients' names, case IDs, you can do that all with SLM. So, so just moving on to the last couple of steps here is obviously pre-manufacturing stage. Again, a nightmare to do in the lab on your own is obviously you've got the options for, for tissue stops. So this option here on the left is obviously you can control the diameter of the tissue stop here by the click of the button. 
just click the plus button just to add it. And you can actually just click where you want the tissue stop to go. And if you hit preview, As you can see, you've got a perfect little tissue stop. And again, you can control the diameter to how you want that to be. And that'll be a perfectly accurate little tissue stop on there. So any free ends, idols, you can use that option there. What you can do also, especially if you're going to be printing these yourselves in-house, one of, one of the things you need to just bear in mind is obviously you need to obviously get that, that support across the, especially if it's going to be lowers or any delicate designs. And this option here on the left here gives you options for support bars. And as you can see, you can just add support bars to where you need it to be. On a case like that, I would suggest probably two support bars if, you, if you're going to be casting in a, in a castable resin. Um, may do, with, with our manufacturer, we would normally put these on ourselves in the, in the slicing software. But if you were concerned about uh, movement or warpage, you can put them on yourselves. And then again, draw where you need them, hit preview. And then obviously they'll just come into play there. So, again, some people use these for options, you know, to 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 create a, a spring tree. You could just control the diameter if you wanted to, and you can actually, because it's three D printed. If you're going to use a castable resin, and your your printer has a, a Z axis, you can actually create your own sort of a sprue formation if you wanted to with that it's quite a neat little option but what i'm going to use these options here for here now is just to create that bit of retention mesh or retention that we want mechanical retention in this that facial veneer so again i'm just going to just put a little bit of a, a cross sort of shape in here And then what you can see is when it all joins, because it's going to be 3D printed, that will print like for like passive process. So when it does print, you'll have that nice wraparound retention in there. I'm just going to hit preview. If that was milled, you'd probably find that it would probably not um, print in that area. Or probably wouldn't mill in that area because it can't go through all that sort of complex um, design but if it's 3d printed no problem at all there so but um, again you can make these designs as advanced as you want to make them you can make them as complex or as simple three chef has all the tools available it has all the tools available on the right hand side like you say you got options to bring live photo cases in you got options to bring try-ins in. you got options to bring your virtual design in, your diagnostics so again it's a great little feature like I said, there's loads of videos, loads of tutorials. If you guys ever go into 3Shape community, there's there's some great little features on there you can follow. It's all free, available now. But that's basically the, in a nutshell, just giving you guys a couple of tips and tricks here just to get get, get your 3D printed RPD done. Um, just to go back to the, the final presentation before we, we round off there, it's just obviously, let me just get it up. And that's basically it, guys. Like you say, if you get the design protocols right from the very beginning, you follow the stages, you can get a very good precision fit, high performance. We know the functions there, the quality is there, the product. But the biggest thing for you guys is obviously the reduction in cost, time, labor, especially now with the lack of experienced techs in the market or, or, or the lack of, like I said, I know in the UK how short we are for skilled cobalt chrome technicians. If you can do this in-house for you guys, you guys can have a, 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 a brilliant product that you guys can use. Argon obviously supplies it. We know the quality of their outsourcing. Like you're saying, it's going to be a perfect sort of a, there's many, many studies online. If you go in there, like you said, in the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry, showing you all the different combinations of the, the strength, obviously the trueness of the, the RPDs additively manufactured against the castables. And obviously also, there's a lot on there on about the patient comfort, 
the the overall stability. So there's a lot on there you can actually see and, and why are we using digital for, for these RPD solutions because I think that definitely the pros are starting to outweigh the cons. But if you guys can get the designs done, and like you say, um, using all these sort of other sort of options you've got with, with three shape exocad you guys will get a great product back at the end of the day so but like i said it's it's thank you for your attention guys like i said i think like i said it's it's been a good couple of days i know you guys have been here right to the end so i thank you for your time because like you said i think everyone sounds like they're knocking down and, and moving on so perfect but thank you very much guys if i am around you if you guys want to come have some chats um, like I said, just to talk about any of the 3D solutions or RPDs, like I said, if there's any tips and tricks you want to know, come come, come grab me here down at the, the table. But thank you again. Hope you guys have a safe trip or wherever you guys are going. Um, and enjoy the rest of your Saturday.